people talk about cravings all the time and food cravings. But the fact of the matter is that most times, people aren't craving broccoli. They're craving ice cream, cookies, candy, cake. So what is it about carb cravings that has us jumping to the snack aisle? It's important to know what's causing your carb cravings because you hear a lot of advice of do this for a carb craving and try that and it didn't work because that may not be what's driving yours. So the first thing to think about is are you eating too few or too many carbs? Both of those things can make you crave carbs. So for example, if you're overeating too much carbohydrate at dinner and you're sleepy after dinner or you start craving more sugar, you know that those people that say, I just have to have something sweet yeah. every time I eat, they're overshooting their capacity to tolerate those carbs. It's a component of insulin insulin resistance to lower their blood sugar. So they're having trouble there. So if you're having too many, it can make you feel like you're having a carb craving. And I call that kind of the blood sugar roller coaster where Absolutely. I went up and then I went crashing down. If you feel like you're on that roller coaster where you're having cravings between meals or after meals, play with what kind of carbohydrates you're having and the amount. We all need a different amount. My husband can eat a whole sweet potato. I can tolerate about five bites and then I'm starting to feel sleepy and craving and wanting to eat the rest of that sweet potato. So using what I call your unique carb tolerance. Take a little time to figure out what kinds and what amounts and meal timing, how far you can go between meals. A lot of people think that they're having a craving when it's truly been four or five hours, they're actually hungry. So it's important to you to recognize, are you hungry, which you feel in your stomach, or are you craving, which is more like you feel in your head. It's a little bit more attached to an emotion. Low neurotransmitters, both low serotonin, low dopamine, those can drive carb cravings as well significantly. So you gotta treat the right thing. You talk about that roller coaster of blood sugar. And something that I noticed, because I was a very big carb eater, and then I stopped, I didn't realize how bad I felt after I ate carbs until I stopped eating the, the processed carbs or the simple carbohydrates. So I think that that's a really important point, that people aren't aware and they need to almost pay attention, like watch themselves, eat something and see how you feel to be able to become self-aware. And it feels nutrients. really tedious right. at first, but it's really worth spending. It will only take you mm -hmm. four or five days, honestly. All my patients say, oh, doesn't seem like a lot of work. Well, it's work worth doing because that's the only way you're gonna figure out what works for you because there's a reason there's a million diet books. They don't work for everyone. So finding out what does work for you takes a little time, but it's the only way you're gonna get on top of it. And people do, they're completely oblivious. They think everyone feels tired after they eat lunch. That's why they have a coffee break, right? But it's not, you're not supposed to feel anything from eating other than not hungry anymore. How come after sitting at a computer for hours and hours or heavy brain work, somehow the carb cravings get bigger? And we've done articles about how the brain is fueled with glucose. Is that what's at the root of that carb craving? Part of it, our brain is fueled with glucose. Mm -hmm. So just like going through a workout, if you're gonna spend some time doing some really heavy thinking or reading or working, you may feel like your carb cravings are worse after that. So that has something to do with your stress mechanism, how well you can sustain yourself and fuel your brain while you're not eating. But that might be also a time to look back at what did you eat in the meal previous? So if this was dinner, maybe you do need a little more carbohydrate or a little different one or a little more fiber to help the carbohydrate that you have be a little bit more level. So when you get a sensation like in your case a craving after working on the computer look back to the last meal and see what you could possibly do better usually starting with more protein more fiber and then could you adjust the type or amount of carbs to help you feel better what's your favorite slow burning carb I hate the favorite terms in my work because everyone's got our biases. I really think, again, it's the best one that works for you. So for me, personally, I love squashes and pumpkins and things like that because they are a really great high fiber carb with not a ton of starches. I do better on that than I do on sweet potato, but someone else might not do the same. And someone else might do really well with fruit where I tend to gain a lot of weight if I eat a lot of fruit. So again, going back to what is the perfect carb and the favorite carb for your unique metabolism. But nonetheless, cake, cookie, candy. That is only usually going to taste good and then not be the best for our metabolism in the long run. All right. Thank you, Dr. Brooke Kalanick on Curbing Our Carbs. Mm -hmm.